Oh, oh God. Oh. I'll have what she's having. Okay, when I bring up the idea of savoring, most of us probably won't take it as far as Meg Ryan did in When Harry Met Sally. But odds are, most of us probably think of some experience we enjoyed the hell out of, and often that's probably related to food or drink. Sure, savoring food and drink is pretty awesome, but savoring is so much more than just food. There's actually four distinctly different types of savoring, as well as three different ways that we can apply each of those four types. To start, let's define savoring. To savor is to prolong the enjoyment of an experience by attending to the details inherent within that experience as it happens. We can experience savoring in the moment as it happens, but we can also savor the future by anticipating something we know is going to be a positive experience, and we can also savor the past by reminiscing on something that happened previously. As for the four types of savoring, one of them we automatically know and associate with the word savor, and that's called luxuriating, which is savoring anything that comes in through one of our five senses. Food and drink is an obvious one, but we can also savor the feel of a hot bath after a hard day. We can also savor the smell of new electronics on Christmas morning, or the sound of our favorite song that just happens to be on repeat for the 43rd time in a row, if you're anything like me. <laughs> I do that. Or we can savor the sight of a clean room when we want to kick back with an all-night Netflix binge. But outside luxuriating, there's also basking, which is savoring in regards to a sense of pride. Whether that's pride in someone else, like the pride I feel as a parent when I go to one of my kids' school concerts, or maybe it's pride in myself if I aced that particularly difficult midterm. Another type of savoring is rooted in gratitude, which is where we feel an overwhelming sense of appreciation for something we receive, whether that's a tangible gift or perhaps it's just a random compliment. I like my school, I like anything, I like my dad, I like my cousins. The fourth type of savoring is by far my personal favorite, and that's marvel, or also referred to as wonder. This happens when some amazing or unexplainable moment just sweeps us up into the moment and renders us completely speechless. For example, holding your newborn baby for the first time, or suddenly recognizing the enormity or the beauty of the moment where the rest of the world just seems to fade away, leaving you and that special moment. Yeah, I cherish these moments. So savoring sounds pretty good, right? I mean, it is the stuff that makes life worth living after all. But what does it have to do with interpersonal relationships? Try this out. Look back through your life story for some of the most memorable times that you spent with friends, family, or other loved ones. Root through your memory files and try to find a really good one. Go ahead. I'll wait. Got it? Okay, keep that in mind while I tell you a story about mine. It was a warm summer evening, and I was hanging out at a friend's backyard with a few other friends. We talked for what felt like moments, but in reality, it was probably more like hours and well into the early hours of the morning. I can't tell you what we talked about. I can't tell you what day it was. I don't remember a whole lot about it, but what I do remember with crystal clear certainty is how it felt. And it's what a researcher named Mihai Cheeksent Mihai called flow. Athletes are already pretty familiar with this concept of flow, and they often refer to it as being in the zone. It's when any and all disruptions to the flow of the moment simply fade away, and everything else just seems to fall into place, making everything unfold effortlessly. As you can imagine, flow is a pretty difficult thing to force, and some researchers suggest that it can't be forced. Instead, all we can do is create the conditions for flow to take place, and then sit back and hope for the best. To that end, our activity during this part is to do just that. I call this one a savory meal. I want you to sit down to a good meal with someone you care about. Ideally, that means no fast food and no boxed or microwave dinners. It should be something that requires some time, effort, and care to prepare. In fact, the more thought and intention goes into preparing that meal, the more likely you and the other person will end up appreciating it. Bonus points if the other person helps you 
you prepare the meal as well. As you dine together, treat it as though it was your last moments on Earth, without getting overly dramatic about it. Oh, no. <laughs> Approach this meal as though nothing in the future matters, and it's only this moment. Bask in your conversation. Savor each bite of food and sip your drink slowly. Allow the moment to unfold as it will and allow the conversation to flow without forcing it. If it works out and it turns into a three or four hour conversation until the late hours of the evening, wonderful. If it doesn't though, don't be disappointed. All we can do is create the conditions for savoring and flow to take place in much the way that all a gardener can do is create the conditions necessary for plants to grow. The gardener can till the soil and provide fertilizer and water it, but at some point it's really up to the sea on whether it grows or not. I'd love to know how it went for you, so either through class discussion and reflections or in the comments below, let me know what happened. And with that said, you know the routine. Like this video if you like where we're headed, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you next time.